Highly compelling archaeological evidence suggests that Homo heidelbergensis is the direct ancestor of both Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens. Their fossils have been dated to between 600,000 and 300,000 years ago, and have been found in both Europe and Africa. But the tools they used were very similar to those of the tools used by Homo erectus. So, who exactly were these ancient and mysterious human ancestors? It has been argued that Homo heidelbergensis is likely descended from Homo ergaster from Africa, based on their close morphology. Because Homo heidelbergensis had a larger average brain capacity than modern humans, and used advanced tools, it has achieved its own species classification. Surprisingly, Homo heidelbergensis was taller, males averaged 7 feet, and much stronger than modern humans. Regarding their social behavior, Homo heidelbergensis may have been the first species to bury their dead, based on 28 skeletons found in a cave in Spain. The discovery of red ochre in the cave also indicates personal adornment. Dental analysis suggests they may have been right-handed, which also suggests their brains had developed the capability for language. Homo heidelbergensis was a sophisticated hunter, as evidenced by wooden projectile spears attributed to them. In terms of the evolutionary tree, with the spread of Homo heidelbergensis out of Africa and into Europe, the climate at this time would have caused a divergence in evolution. Homo neanderthalensis diverged from Homo heidelbergensis probably some 300,000 years ago in Europe. Homo sapiens probably diverged around the same time in Africa. Over one million years ago our ancestors belonged to the primitive species Homo erectus, who is probably the ancestor of Homo ergaster as well. Jump to 300,000 years ago, and Earth is home to at least three lineages of big-brained humans, including Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Most anthropologists agree that if you traced your ancestry back about one million years, you'd find a population of Homo erectus. From the neck down, these creatures resembled present-day people, they had modern stature and body proportions, distinguished by relatively long legs and short arms. There's a wealth of research about Homo erectus, as well as early modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. But much less is known about Homo heidelbergensis, the first specimen was reported in Germany in 1908, a 610,000-year-old jawbone. These hominins increased in brain size, spread to new lands, and hunted challenging game with finely crafted weapons. One of these lineages led to modern humans. But the details of their lives and evolutionary relationships are still a mystery. However, no Homo erectus would be mistaken for a Homo sapiens. With hulking brows and flatter skulls, the species had brains about two-thirds our size. The average volume of Homo erectus skulls was just 950 cubic centimeters, compared to 1350 cubic centimeters for modern humans. Nonetheless, genetic evidence suggests that between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, an intermediate species existed, sometimes called Homo heidelbergensis, Homo rhodesiensis, or Homo antecessor, depending on your school of thought on the subject. By comparing genetic differences between lineages, researchers have estimated the timing of the evolutionary splits between modern humans, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. Using the molecular clock dating approach, they have found that Homo sapiens diverged around 520,000 to 630,000 years ago, and the Neanderthals and Denisovans split 390,000 to 440,000 years ago. Regardless of which population directly led to Homo sapiens, hominins across the globe increased in brain size, which seems to have enabled more advanced and complex behaviors. Compared to Homo erectus, stone tools made by these hominins were more sophisticated, thinner, and more symmetrical. They also hunted larger, more challenging prey, including herds of elephants, horses, and rhinoceros. Hunting and killing these animals requires planning, experience, and cooperation. One spectacular site, a cave in Spain called the Pit of Bones, has yielded the most Homo heidelbergensis remains of any site. Excavations at the cave have unearthed more than 7,000 fossils, representing at least 28 individuals, dated to 430,000 years ago. Amazingly, paleoanthropologists have managed to reconstruct the partial skulls of at least 20 hominins from the pit, and most of them appear to have suffered and survived bone-breaking blows to the head. Furthermore, 17 out of 20 of the skulls showed signs of a type of injury, called a depressed skull fracture. 
Evidence of traumatic injury isn't terribly surprising in a pit full of skeletons, because they must have died somehow. But in this case, the vast majority of the skull fractures were wounds that had healed long before the individuals died. When a blunt object, such as a rock or a club, hits a human skull, it can push a small section of bone inward, if the force of the impact is focused in a relatively small area. In the worst cases, the broken plate of bone can put pressure on the brain, or the fracture can leave the brain exposed to bacterial infection. If neither of those things happens, depressed skull fractures usually heal on their own. And that's exactly what happened to most of the early humans who ended up in the pit of bones. As the fractures healed, the bone healed itself over the edges of the fractures, rounding off the sharp edges of broken bone. In other words, these early humans had clearly survived head injuries. Indeed, a few of the skulls bore the marks of at least 10 healed fractures, suggesting that their former owners led very violent and dangerous lives. Most of the healed fractures were in vulnerable parts of the skull. The areas where only the scalp, not muscle, covers the bone. Otherwise, the injuries were scattered around the skulls, without any clear pattern to suggest what might have happened. So what exactly was happening at this time, to give early humans so many cracked skulls? Anthropologists often recognize battle injuries based on the location on the skeleton. If you hold a club in your right hand and swing it at another person, your blow is most likely to land on their left side. But if someone is throwing rocks at another person, the impacts will be more random, as is the case with these skulls. Tellingly, nearly half of the skulls in the pit showed traces of injuries, that happened around the time of death, when the bone was still fresh, and didn't have time to start healing. Shockingly, one person died with two depressed fractures in their forehead, apparently made two by blows from the same weapon. The dimensions and contours of the two depression fractures, were found to be almost indistinguishable, including the presence of a similarly placed notch in both fractures. This strongly suggests that both fractures were caused by the same object, and clearly shows the injury was not accidental. Indeed, scientists say the fossilized skull, discovered deep inside the Spanish cave, shows the telltale signs of homicide. The ancient human skull has signs of repeated blunt force trauma, suggesting foul play. The attacker smashed the victim twice, the head was bashed in, leaving matching holes, above the victim's left eyebrow. The body was then dropped down a 43-foot shaft into the cave, where it lay for nearly half a million years. A face-to-face -face attack, with a blunt instrument, best fits the pattern of this injury. Since these wounds would likely have been lethal, penetrating the brain, the presence of multiple wounds implies an intention to kill. Scientists believe that an act of violence caused the death of this individual, because an accident would be very unlikely to break the cranium twice, in nearly the same place. The truth of what occurred, nearly 500,000 years ago, was revealed after researchers pieced together 52 fragments of the skull. They discovered the two holes above the left eye, caused by two separate impacts from the same object, following slightly different trajectories. To prove their hypothesis, the research team also put the skull through a rigorous round of modern forensic analysis. Scientists examined the bone microscopically, and used CT scans. This allowed them to measure the fracture angle, and to recreate the impact trajectories needed to produce such holes, as well as examine crack patterns, that indicate whether a wound was inflicted before or after death. Additionally, they studied the bone to see if it showed any signs of healing, an indication that the wound was not fatal, but there was no sign of healing. Based on the findings, the murder weapon may have been a wooden spear, stone spear tip, or stone hand axe. The position of the wound, on the left side of the face, points to blows coming from a right-handed individual, and most of these hominids were indeed right-handed. Multiple blows usually point to a clear intention to kill. Accidental blows tend to happen on the side of the head, whereas intentional violence tends to be focused on the face. Remarkably, six other skulls had penetrating fractures in the back and base, from around the time of death. This is a consistent enough pattern to suggest frequent intentional violence. And two other skulls had depressed fractures, both on the left sides of their skulls, which is compatible with violence-related injuries, again caused by right-handed perpetrators. Moreover, the apparent use of a murder weapon, even if it was only a stone, 
and the apparent repeated blows to the head, hints that humans were turning their increasingly sophisticated intellect towards violent ends, as well as towards cooperation and survival. These people were still using fairly primitive stone tools, including a finely crafted hand axe, nicknamed Excalibur, that was found in the pit of bones. This axe could have been a tribute to the dead, or maybe it was the murder weapon. However, other archaeological evidence suggests these early humans were developing intelligent and complex new behaviors that did not involve killing one another. Elsewhere in the cave, archaeologists discovered the remains of an elderly Homo heidelbergensis man with severe back problems, who couldn't have fended for himself. Indeed, the man's advanced age suggests his community must have care protected him. The man was about 45 years old when he died, his spine was bent forward, and to keep an upright posture, he possibly used a cane, just like elderly people today. The fact that he was so infirm, suggests he was cared for by his contemporaries, which is good evidence that these ancient people didn't abandon the elderly and the weak. Therefore, rather than being a burden, he may have had valuable knowledge, that he shared with other members of the group, that helped them survive. This provides evidence for a highly socialized group, with bonds of solidarity. Even so, there is some controversy among scientists as to whether these skeletons are Homo heidelbergensis, early transitional Neanderthals, or later advanced Homo erectus. <laughs>